In a game that was a microcosm of the first 41 games for the Pittsburgh Penguins, they dug themselves a hole and then dug themselves out of it. The Penguins trailed 3-1 to one after the first period and rallied for a point against one of the best teams in the Western Conference, the Vancouver Canucks, losing 4-3 in overtime. I am Dan Kingersky on the Pittsburgh Hockey Now and the National Hockey Now YouTube page. Boy, there's just a, a lot to unpack and tonight I've organized, albeit on a napkin, but nevertheless, I have in fact uh, organized the thoughts. Maybe we can even do this like the old five minute Penguins post games. So let's uh, get right to it. There was a new twist in the Penguins goaltending battle on Thursday. Alex Adelkovich starts, gives up three goals. Now, this kind of really drove me nuts, actually. The fans were like, oh, Nadelkovich had a bad game. Absolutely not. There's no way to know if he played well, didn't play well. When the other team gets the goals that Vancouver got, those tips in front, the backdoor play that's not covered, that's not on the goaltender, not even a little bit. So uh, Coach Mike Sullivan realizes the Penguins are flat, puts Tristan Jari in. Now here's where it gets a little bit interesting because Jari doesn't make flashy, big, windmill saves and no I'm not doing that again Jari doesn't do that very often he did that a couple or a few times in the second period on Thursday he snagged uh, Teddy Bluger um trying to think of Sam Lafferty he got right in the slot and <laughs> actually I guess lefty so it would have been more like that you get the idea and Jari made a little show of it if you don't think there's a little competitive fire there, just a little take a look at this. Yeah, I've got news for you. Everybody playing it cool, playing it calm. You can use whatever word you want. Goalie controversy, goalie battle, goalie competition. It's all the same thing. The Pittsburgh Penguins now have two goalies. And I don't mean a 1A and a 1B. I mean, they've got two. And you're going to see this back and forth, I think, for the rest of the season, which is interesting. We haven't had that here since Murray and Flurry, and really since Jari began to push Matt Murray out of the way. It did get under my skin a little bit. I'm going to take umbrage with a, a few of you who are like, oh, Kangerski's just trying to get clicks, calling it a goalie controversy. Did you hit your head somewhere along? Did you fall out of the dumb tree? I'm being kind. Fall out of the stupid tree? Not since Jari was shoving aside Matt Murray has the Penguins' second goalie played this many games. And Alex Nedeljkovic, if you haven't taken a look, if you're not really paying attention, has played in six of the last eight games. That's not just putting a guy in because he won the last game. Because even, like, look, Casey DeSmith won a few games. He didn't start the next game automatically. So don't give me this nonsense that it's, it's nothing, because in reality, it's everything. Alex Adelkovich has earned playing time, and he's earning more at the expense of Tristan Jari, and Coach Mike Sullivan has kind of leveled the playing field. Maybe it's win and you're in, or maybe it's play well and stay in. I'm not sure. Maybe they don't quite yet know, but uh, Tuesday night, or sorry, Thursday night, Tristan Jari was really good uh, in regulation. Overtime and shootouts continue to be a little bit of a problem for him. It, they, just, they just are. But in regulation, at 5-on-5, five five, Jari was spectacular because in the second period, down 3-1, uh, the, the Penguins were still playing a risky game. Bad passes, blind passes, creating odd man rushes, defensive gaffes, um, not tracking back hard enough, defensemen getting trapped. They, they made all of those mistakes, giving Vancouver some really good looks at Jari, and he stopped them all. Um, building on that just a little bit, it was not a great night for Eric Carlson or Chris Letang. I thought both um, had a couple of, of those plays go, oof. Though that's been happening a little bit more lately. I think both of them have to rein it back in. I think, I think both of them are thoroughbreds that want to gallop. They're best when they don't. 
however. Constraining, containing, simplifying work for the team, but their natural inclination is to try to bust out of the pen. And I, I think recently, the last uh, few games anyway, I, I've seen the signs of, you know, can they, can they corral themselves? Um, by the way, a little side note here. I haven't heard much criticism of Mike Sullivan lately. <laughs> For everybody who's like, oh, Sullivan has to be fired. Well, um, moving on, right? All right. We did a little Q&A, put it out on Twitter. I took the top four questions on the board. Jesse wanted to know if I felt this was a stolen point. I guess that was a social media talking point. I, I have to tell you. Uh, side note before I get to Jesse, before I get to Jesse and your question. Twitter has just been really, really bad for a couple of months, just almost, and I don't mean the actual platform, I just mean the opinions and the obstinance and the, and the blind to facts, but nevertheless assert the same opinion over and over and over again. It's almost been maddening. I mean, this, this season, perhaps more than any in the last 10 that I've covered, with the exception of 2015-16, which had cataclysmic change, this team has been a work in progress the entire time, moving and growing and evolving and changing and dipping and flowing and ebbing and all of those sorts of things. It's, it's been a very unique season so far. Uh, so to that end, unfortunately, I think a lot of fans, and I'm sorry, you're all stuck, not all. Many of you are stuck in this tear it down, they suck, I want all new players, I want to rebuild, I want to, I want to stink for a while. And anything short of the arsonist mentality gets ridiculed or criticized, and, and any win gets knocked down, any loss gets amplified, and it, you, some of y'all are just kind of wearing me out. I mean, listen, the city of Pittsburgh tried to charge me 10 cents for the bags under my eyes. They're getting pretty big. Relax, would you? I mean, try to pay attention to the daily up and down and take it in the context of where the team is headed but jesse no it was not a stolen point they played poorly in the first period against a very good team listen that elias Pettersson tip the third goal p.o joseph bodies him up in front of the net he, he did he but Pettersson lunges forward perpendicular to the puck like what are you gonna do there is no way to stop that there there just isn't and that's one of those tip your cap. And, and the first goal, when Pedersen, Elias Pedersen, streaks down the left wing, Achari's chasing him, and Pedersen, almost like a UFO, stops and changes directions. Achari would have broken his ankles if he tried to uh, keep up with that. And that hesitation created literally about six or eight inches of a window for uh, Brock Besser, because Jeff Carter's stick was right there. Alex Adelkovich was sliding over. There was literally eight to 12 inches of a window from 30 feet away. Pedersen puts the puck right on Besser's blade for that goal. Sometimes you just tip your cap. But the other goals could have been prevented, not by the goaltender, but by maybe a little harder defense by both the forwards and defensemen, a little more uh, defensive zone detail down low, I think could have stopped plays or or rerouted them to that point. Uh, Henry says one for three, one for five, one for six, oh for four on the power play. How can they stop this level of suck? I'm going to go a bit meta on you, Henry. I don't think Evgeny Malkin is is in the proper position anymore. I, I And I know some insiders think uh, the same thing. He's, he's not moving with the same gallop through center ice. He's not producing. He's, you know, he's just that. And, and, I, and I think um, on nights like uh, tonight, it really sort of showed 
maybe maybe Jake Gensel goes there, but Gensel doesn't have a big enough shot to play out at the point. I'm, I'm really not sure what you'd do because Latang and Carlson do not, absolutely do not work together. I'm kind of doing this on, on the fly here for you, um, Henry, but I, I do think moving Malkin and and reshuffling that uh, power play might might help. I also I like Crosby down low. I know my uh, colleague Mr. Mark Madden wants him on the right wall. I like him down a little bit lower. We'll, we'll agree to disagree, but you know there there does have to be some changes because for whatever reason, look in the third period that power play was buzzing. And you almost want to ask, why can't you guys do that? Like, there's a level of urgency. They move a little crisper. They, they move faster. They move the puck when they're urgent. But so often, they're not urgent. And when they're not urgent, they absolutely are, are um, yeah, excrement on toast. What does Carlson actually do well? Dean asks. In the report card, uh, I kind of, I touched on this a bit for you, Dean. Every night is a lot of good, some not so good, and some bad from Eric Carlson. And it, it might take a calculator some nights to add up all of the good, the bad, and the ugly, and to see if it was a positive effect or a, a net negative effect. He certainly is a different sort of player. And uh, I also have difficulty analyzing his game. It would be easier if he were better in the defensive zone and a little less risk averse. It would be easier, I think, and better for the Penguins, better for him. But the guy did score 100 points last year, the first defenseman since 1992 to do so. And the guy can put up points, but he's just, yeah, the uh, the gears haven't all aligned and clicked with this team. And I, and I wonder if it will. Listen, I, I'm the guy who wrote back in late July and even in August before the trade that I thought there was great risk with getting Eric Carlson because of the Penguins stars and how he would integrate his game. There's only one puck on the ice. And sometimes there's not enough puck for everybody. I, 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 I do still wonder if Eric Carlson is a great fit for the team. I wonder with you. Uh, I'm going to maybe trust smarter people than I to, to know that answer. But uh, I'm kind of with you in, in a lot of nights wondering if, if that's the best allocation or best use of the resources. And Jamie asks, is Ned pushing Jari for playing time? Yep. And that'll do it from PPG Paints Arena here. I forgot to beg for the likes and subscribe, so uh, do that now. If you could, that helps me get paid more than like 38 cents for doing these videos. On Friday, I will cover practice and head straight to Raleigh. I'll be down there for the game on Saturday. Uh, Dave Molinari and I will have full practice coverage. And, um, yeah, I'll have coverage Saturday. And, and the boys over at Steelers now will have Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. By the way, I really do think the Steelers are going to win on Sunday. Just got a gut feeling. Just, just a weird gut feeling that, in fact, they are going to win. So from PPG Paints Arena, I'm Dan Kingerski on the Pittsburgh Hockey Now and the National Hockey Now YouTube page.